I hope everything's up to a fine start at your house this morning. Ooh, it's going to be hot. There's a little cloud cover, but it's going to burn off. It's going to be a hot and beautiful day on Lake Livingston, Texas today. Oh, what I got to going on today is not really all that exciting. Yeah, I'm just going, well, I got two different jobs today. We're going over. This lady got a couple jet skis. Then she says they don't need to be serviced. They got a few hours on them from last year. But the batteries are dead. I did, I serviced these skis last year. So, but she says the batteries are dead. They need to be changed. And, um, well, she's gonna, uh, she asked me what kind of battery tenders to uh, order this and that. So I put her on to some battery tenders. She's got the battery tenders. And uh, we're gonna install a couple batteries and put the pigtails on them for her and set the units up to where she can just plug them in and charge them, keep them fully charged uh, year round. And um, it's not that exciting of a job, but what is gonna make it exciting is these units are hanging out over the water in a boat right in a boathouse. So, drum roll, please. We're going live without a net. No, not a net. A net. Whoo! Well, when we get done there. We're going over to a gentleman's house. He's got a John Deere Gator. And he seems to think he's having starter troubles. Which I tend to believe him. And uh, we're going to test the starter, make good and sure that that's what's going on. And then. Uh, We're going to call and uh, get a, uh, a starter order. Or if we find one close enough, we may just go get it and come back and install it. That would probably be the ideal thing. At the next stop sign, Man, take a money. sharp left turn. There ain't no money in the bank. I'm more out from the wait, fellas. It's been a long wait. It's going to be an even longer wait next week. I miss winter time. <laughs> Oh. I did go to the lake yesterday eating with my ski and um, at the stop sign take a sharp left turn onto FM 356 well things weren't as good as what I was hoping for I wasn't expecting a whole lot, but you, you just never know. Um, I'm hoping that it's just carburetor issues. In 11 miles, but turn right onto US 190. Also, um, I couldn't get above well, one time I did get above uh, 
be a throttle on it. And I run, oh shoot, my three, eight, four miles in a big circle. And uh, trying to get as much run time as I could with it on WFO. So uh, maybe it would clear out whatever it was if it was something in the carburetor. Because, I mean, you know, it's just under a load. So I'm sure that the uh, that there's something stopped up in there. Uh, I can almost see it. But at the same time, with these skis, it's kind of hard to say. Um, unless you check the wear ring, you just don't know for sure. And uh, I was able to get under the ski and feel that there wasn't any debris or anything like that. Uh, and it seems like kind of seems like it's revving but it's like bouncing off the rev limiter but I'm not really for sure so what I'm going to do is I'm going when I get home this afternoon I'm going to crawl up underneath it and I'm going to check the uh, check the clearance on the on the wear ring and uh Make sure that there's nothing in there obstructing it. And, uh, then, if that's good, then I'm going to the, the top side and I'm going to pull the carburetors off, the carburetor off, and, uh, give it a clean. It, it, it very well could be carburetor issues because when I first started running it, I was running it without the seat. The back seat. And so it might have been sucking just a little bit too much air. Um, and I realized what I did after I got, because <laughs> I pulled that seat off there. I Oh, I remember why I pulled the seat off. I wanted to make sure that there wasn't any leaks on the hull or, you know, where everything joins up in the rear before I launched it. And whenever, whenever I, I still had it on the trailer and I tested it on the trailer and it done real good under a load on the trailer. And, um, uh, So I guess you might say in the the midst of me taking it off the trailer and getting it on, uh, getting it beached, and then getting the truck out of the water and and all that good stuff, I forgot the seat sitting in the back of the truck. And I rode around for 20 bucks for that 10. Man, that would be worth it. So worth it. A good 10, 20 bucks. Anyway, well, see, I got that stuff really bad. That ADHD is really bad. I can get off real fast. And uh, look, there's Lakeway Baptist Church. But uh, anyhow, we got, there's a crow. <laughs> so I was out riding and it really wasn't performing that really well. And I'm like, man, shucks. Okay, well, maybe if I ride it just a little while longer, it'll clear itself out. So I rode it a little while longer and it never cleared itself out. And uh, okay. Well, 
I let spend a hundred bucks to come down the lake. I am going to enjoy what's left of the evening. So I skipped off over to the island and poked around in a rock bed for a little bit. I found a couple arrowheads. And uh, <laughs> then I got back on the ski and went out for another little ride. And one time, one time it showed me promise of brilliance. It went, it allowed me to break that threshold between the mid range and WFO and I boogied across the lake for, I don't know, five or ten minutes. I made it as long as I could, you know, uh, before curiosity got the best of me and I wanted to let off the throttle and see how it would perform, you know, from zero to WFO. And, uh, well, it did real good from zero to, up into the mid-range up to about 15, 20 miles an hour. So, like I said, it could be uh, carburetor issues. It could be wear ring issues. Whichever way it goes, um, I'm going to get it fixed. I'm going to have it fixed. It's just going to take me longer. I was hoping to be able to go down, well, go to Registry and uh, have it down on the lake for Memorial Day weekend and have a good time this weekend. But it don't look like I'm going to do that. Unless I get real lucky with the carburetor tomorrow. Or, yeah, tonight, whenever. I ain't going to rush myself because I'm, I'm frazzled, I'm tired. And, uh... I'm needing a break. I don't need to work all the time. My customers, he told me I need to spend a lot less time working and a lot more time having fun. <laughs> He's 35 years old and military vet with, I think, three or four deployments in the war zones and uh, decorated. Purple Heart, recipient, disabled veteran, man. You know, he's 32 years old and uh, very intelligent, man. He he told me real quick, he said, man, he spent a lot less time working, a lot more living. And I respect that opinion, James. John, I can't remember if it's James or John. And, and he knows who I'm talking about now. <laughs> Hats off to those guys in the cavalry units. You know who I'm talking about. You guys rock. Yep. Anyway, I'm going to get off of here. I'm nearly to Alaska. God bless you. Remember, all things are possible through Christ. This is a battery tender brand that I recommended. It's 1.5 amp battery charger and tender. All in one.
This is the battery charger that she bought. You hook up the red to the positive side, and the black to the negative side. Secure your pigtail, find a place to store the pigtail, and secure it for future use. Battery shows 2.6 volts. Let's plug this Foval automatic battery charger in. And see what happens. Says the power's on and it is charging. Can you see that? hot wire to the hot wire on the battery hey we got 13.1 volts there okay good as snuff so it is charging all right we're going to test the battery i can't put you in here C voltage DC hot lead on the hot terminal. I gotta get to where I can see. Yeah. Red lead on the hot terminal, positive terminal. Alright, we got 3.28 volts here. He won't even power up, okay. Hot wire there. Negative wire there. Alright. Alright. So we 
We got dead battery. You just connect uh, the red lead to the hot side of the battery, the positive side of the battery. You hook the black lead up to the negative side. Alright, I'm going to take you off and put you up. installed red to the positive side black to the negative side run your cord through that little tie wrap there leave your tail dangling like this so you can test it and whenever you get done place it right up underneath there for safekeeping all right and it'll always be there it'll always be there so whenever you get ready to charge it just pull this little tail out, plug your charger in, and plug it into a, a good electrical source. I'll be right back. I'm going to test it and see what we got. DC. You pull your tail. This makes testing the battery so much easier. All right, you got your your hot side there, which is positive. Put your red on it. All right, we got 3.314 volts there, so that pigtail is good. Now I'm gonna plug that back in for a minute. As soon as I figure out how. Aha. There we go. Let me go get my battery charger in. Let's plug this battery charger in. Problems from the word go. There we go. It's not a good plug. Okay, we got power. 
and it shows to be charging. Let me get my voltage meter ready. Get it on voltage DC. The red lead on the positive. Black lead on the ground. It's charging 12.14 volts. what you get when you buy off brand stuff. Alright. Now, for that period of time that we were working on one ski, that other ski was charging. Let's see what the battery says on it. It was two something, two something volts whenever we started. Let's just see what we got. Now. Because it is not plugged into the battery charger at all. Voltage DC. Side of the battery there. Okay, we're 4.3 volts, so it's done brought it up to 2.1 volts, so it's doing its job. Alright, this is coming straight from the Foval instruction manual. Automatic battery charger, 12 volts, 1000 milliamps. Got a parts diagram. All right. In English, description Foval automatic battery charger is an automatic battery charger and battery maintenance device all in one. Because it charges at a rate of only one amps per hour. Foval automatic battery charger is best used as a trickle charger. This means that the battery is charged slowly over a long period of time, usually several hours. For a typical 12 volt car battery and up to several days for a marine or deep cycle battery. Fortunately, operating a Foval automatic battery charger is fairly easy, even for those unaccustomed to use of battery chargers. Package contents one battery charger one cable with battery clamps connectors one cable with o-ring terminal connector features slip on a heavy pair of work glove and some form of eye protection such as goggles or safety glasses batteries contain acid which is capable of producing severe burns and eye damage if the battery is in the vehicle Detach any guards, shields, or covers that obscure the battery terminals. Place the Foval battery charger in a safe location as far away from the battery as cables will allow. If the battery is still in a vehicle, ensure all cables are away from any moving parts such as hinges, 
or fan blades. Attach the positive red clip or ring to the Fobile automatic battery charger to the, ba to the positive battery terminal. For a battery still in the vehicle, attach the negative or black clip ring to the engine block or a solid portion of the frame. Never connect to fuel lines, sheet metal, or any part of the carburetor. For a battery removed from the vehicle, connect the positive clip as normal. Then attach the battery extension cable to the negative terminal. You must then connect the extension cable to the battery charger negative clip ring. Connect the Fobile automatic battery charger power cord to an AC power outlet. If necessary, use a quality extension cord. Use a, if necessary to use an extension cord, use a quality extension cord. That's what that means. Unless you are using the Fobile automatic battery charger to maintain a fully charged battery, the red indicator light should let let you know the connections are good and the battery is charging. While the battery is charging, if the battery voltage is lower than 8.5 volts, the battery will be small current to charge with one amp automatic. Battery maintenance better. When the battery voltage is up to 8.5 volts, the battery will be charged with a bulk charging process with one, point, with one amp. If CV, constant voltage absorption to the voltage 14.4 volts, this is charge cycle for batteries nearly full. It will top off the battery at 14.4 volts DC. When the battery is nearly full, the battery charger will be at the float mode, charging with 0 0.02 amps. During the charging, the red light is on. When the battery is in the float mode, the red light is off and the yellow light is on. Disconnect the Fobol automatic, automatic battery charger from the electrical outlet once the battery has a full charge. Then unhook hook the clips from the terminals. If you wish to maintain the battery's charge, you may allow the Fobol automatic battery charger to remain connected to the battery. Fobol automatic battery charger has a feature such as high efficiency and high reliability. And it also has a protection function such as a short circuit protection over voltage protection and over current protection. Specifications. Voltage input. Put. AC 1, 100 to 240 volts. Output voltage, DC 14 volts, input current limiting, greater than 0.5 amps. Output current, 1.0 amps, plus or minus 0.2 amps at 12 volts. Standby input power, greater than 0.5 watts. Body size, or less than 0.5 watts. Body size. Length 3.89 inches wide by, or excuse me, length 3.89 by width 2.43, the height is 1.28. AC power cord length 17.5 inches, DC power cord length 85 inches. I don't believe that. Operate the ambient, negative 10 degrees Celsius through 40 degrees Celsius, non-operating temperatures, negative four degrees Celsius through plus 70 degrees Celsius. Operate humidity, 25% through 90% relatively humidity. Non-operating humidity, 10% <coughs> through 90% relatively humidity. I don't get that. LED indication. LED is green. Working normally. There's a typo there. They got green, not green. G-R-E-E-D. Should be green. G-R-E-E-N. 
<laughs> yeah, that's what English from Miss Barton. Okay, a green light is working normal. LED is red, it's charging. LED is twinkling red, there's an error. LED is yellow, charging is complete. Important safety instructions. Save these instructions. Number one, save these instructions. This manual contains important safety and operating instructions for the battery charger. Do not expose charger to rain or snow. Use of an attachment not recommended or sold by the battery charger. Manufacturer may result in a risk of fire, electric shock, or injury to persons. The reduced risk of damage to electric plug and or cord plug by plug rather than cord when disconnect. I don't get that. To reduce risk of damage to electric plug and cord pull by plug rather than the cord whenever it's disconnecting the charger. Okay. Do not operate charger with damaged cord or plug. Do not operate charger if it has received a sharpened blow been dropped or otherwise damaged in any way take it to the qualified serviceman that's not me do not disassemble charger take it to a qualified serviceman when service or repair is required incorrect reassembly may result in a risk of electric shock or fire to reduce risk of shock or fire unplug the charger from outlet before attempting any maintenance or cleaning warning risk of explosive gases Working in the vicinity of a LED or lead acid battery is dangerous. Batteries generate explosive gases during normal battery operation. For this reason, it is of the utmost importance that you follow the instructions each time you use a charger. To reduce the risk of battery explosion, follow these instructions and those published by the battery manufacturer and manufacturer of equipment you intend to use in the vicinity of a battery. Review cautionary marking on these batteries, on these products, and on the engine. Personal precautions. Consider having someone close by to come to your aid when you work near a lead acid battery. Have plenty of fresh water and soap nearby in case battery acid could contact skin, clothing, of, or eyes. Wear complete eye protection and clothing protection. Avoid touching eyes while working near the battery. If the battery acid contains contacts skin or clothing, wash immediately with soap and water. If acid enters the eye, immediately flood eyes with running cold water for at least 10 minutes and get medical attention immediately. And get medical attention. Never smoke or allow sparks or flame in the vicinity of a battery or engine. Be extra cautious to reduce risk of dropping a metal tool onto the battery. It might spark or short circuit the battery or other electrical part that may cause explosion. Remove personal metal items such as rings, bracelets, necklaces, and watches. When working with a lead acid battery, a lead acid battery can produce a short circuit. Current high enough to weld a ring or the lights to metal causing a severe burn. Use charger for charging a lead acid battery only it is not intended to supply power to a low voltage electrical system other than a starter motor application do not use battery charger for charging dry cell batteries that are commonly used with home appliances these batteries may burst and cause injury to persons and damage to property never charge a frozen battery preparing to charge if necessary to remove the battery from the vehicle to charge, always remove the grounded terminal from the battery first. Make sure all accessories in the vehicle are off so as not to cause an arc. Be sure area around the battery is well ventilated while battery is being charged. Clean the battery terminals. Be careful to keep corrosion from coming in contact with the eye. Add distilled water in each cell if battery until battery acid levels reach a specific, specified by the battery manufacturer. Do not overfill for a battery without removable cell caps such as a valve. Regulated lead acid batteries carefully follow the manufacturer's recharging instruction.
study all battery manufacturers specified precautions while charging and recommended rates of charge. Determine the voltage of the battery by referring to car owner's manual and make sure it matches <coughs> the output rating of the battery charge. Oh Lord. Well, that's the full instructions on the Fowall automatic battery charger from Amazon. Let it be known that I did recommend to the lady that she buy nothing but battery tender brand battery charger. She had this. Battery tender told her that the pigtails were on back order till July. She was not going to wait that long. So she bought, she decided to go with this made in China. I'm going to ask her to sign uh, my work invoice releasing me from any damages that these may cause the unit or her property. It's only right. Well, I've never heard of Fovol till today. So I do not recommend or endorse this product. Well, let's go over here and see if it's doing its job. We've been reading for a long time. Green light is on and the charging light is on. charging at 11.95 volts okay it is doing its job I'm going to unplug the battery charger from the extension cord let's unplug the pigtail now we're going to hook up to the pigtail with our positive and our negative and it's showing 5.07 volts so it's doing its job it's doing its job it's going to take it a while to do its job but it's going to do it put the battery charger back in Alright, 
It's working again. Alright. She wiped it like she wanted me to stay here while that thing charged. I can't stay here for no eight or ten hours. Hopefully she can understand that. These guys got it made, man. I wish my grandma had something like this when I was growing up. We you ever got a rope swing? Places to sit and swing. Slide. Jet skis. Pontoon. God bless you, Grandma. Right over there on that point right over there is a good place to find some arrowheads. Place over there is a good place to find some. If it wasn't all bulkheaded up.